So good morning or good night, depending on where you are in the world. And welcome to another interview of The Shield Dude on a Couch. I'm your host, Hector. And today on the couch, I'm joined by Per Weaver. And he's a multi-instrumentalist. He's played with countless bands like Opeth, Candlemas. But we're here to talk about his solo project, especially his third, uh, well, second album, because he had an album in 2019, then you had an EP, and now you have this upcoming album that is coming out on March 15, and it's called The Serpents Here. So first of all, uh, Per, how are you today? I'm very good, thank you. Um, it's it's pretty it's pretty warm for being uh, winter in Sweden, but it, it it's all right. Oh well, yeah, that that's a good thing. So uh, I listened to the album, and so uh, I you know it's very interesting because the album I don't think you can categorize it as one thing uh, because it has like different like almost every song is different. And something that I found very interesting is that you recorded the basic tracks from this like on one afternoon. Uh, can, can you talk a little bit about the process of uh, of the recording of this? Uh, I, I I wanted to do uh, record this album like uh, in the opposite way of how I did the previous two releases. The first album and and the the second release, which was an EP, uh, when, when I when I recorded those, I recorded everything on my own, all the instruments and vocals and everything, and sort of finished uh, the songs. And then we we recorded drums last, so so the drums had to adapt to what I already had written and recorded, so to speak. This time I wanted to do the opposite. I wanted to bring a couple of friends in, in the studio and, and have a very uh, loose recording session. And then when that was done, uh, I, I added like uh, additional guitars and keyboards and, and vocals on top of what we recorded so it was then i had to adapt instead of the other way around so to speak yeah that, that's a very different way of doing an album so basically what you did over it you were adapting to what you played in that jam because yeah the album sounds like it like it's people jamming in a room uh and so, yeah it sounds very yeah. different uh so your vocals almost on every song, uh, you have different vocal styles. Like what, what would you say like vocally, uh, like in terms of vocals, like when you're doing albums, like uh, do you prefer certain types of vocals? Because it's, you know, there's uh, there's some very psychedelic songs and you know, they're singing on this. So uh, how do you approach vocals on uh, on these records? Uh, on On this album, I worked a little bit more with the vocals than on the previous two, uh, um, and um, it's it's always vocals is is the di most difficult instrument, <laughs> if you know what I mean, because it's so personal and uh, it, it's it's different when you play guitar or bass or keyboards or whatever, but but when you s start to sing, it's uh, I'm a little bit more sensitive, so. I, about it and and not usually try to work hard to get get it right at least what i think is right uh so this time i worked even harder with it and uh, i wanted to have a little bit more variation because the vocals on on all my solo re releases it's not you know it's not high pitched screamy rock and roll vocals so to speak it's more I just try to follow the music as much as I can, but 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 also the vibe of the music, so to speak. But also there are some, some melodic stuff that you you want to be sort of it, it should be easy to understand the melodic part of, of, of the song as well. Um but I think I think I'm I'm happy with how they came out this time, and I think it, it's more or less what I what my ambition was. I think they follow 
the music pretty well, which is my goal always. That was always your goal. So take us back to pre uh, to previous to 2019. Uh, when did you uh, decide to do, you know, you being a working musician, working with so many bands, how did you decide to do a, your solo material? Uh, what what you know what what inspired you to finally put out your own material your own music um i've i've always been writing music for bands that i've been a member of but i've also had bands and projects in the past where where i've written most of the music and, and so on and and this was i don't know i just felt like maybe it's time to do something on my own But when I started uh, doing this, I didn't think that I was going to do it under my own name. I, th I thought it was going to be like, you know, under a, a band name or a project name or something like that. Because it's, it's, it's a little bit intimidating to put your own name on an album cover, I think. So, but um, I had coffee with with a friend of mine who was in a similar situation. He was going to do his first solo album and I asked him what it was going to be called. And he said, my own name. And it's like, wow, that's, that's a bold statement right there. And then he said, like, you should do the same. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, but I don't know if I dare. So, but then I did it and it, it, it felt good, even though it's a little bit scary. And I just, I just had some time uh, in, Like I recorded that first album a year before it, it was released and I just had some time to, and I thought it was, it felt good to do uh, something with all the influences and all the music that I like that I maybe haven't had the outlet for in the other bands that I've played in. Um, I think, um, I mean, I, I listen to so much different music all the time and I've always been like a music fan as much as a musician, so to speak. And uh, and growing up in the late 70s, 80s and 90s, obviously there's different mm -hmm. different genres that have become popular and you pick up stuff from from everything as you go along. And also the, the music that I was raised on by by my parents. And it's not always that everything that you like fits in with what you're playing with. So I thought it was it was a good it was a good time to to start something new and do something on my own own. And um I didn't I didn't plan on it to be, you know, several releases, but it was I like working with it and and it sort of came natural that I would continue to do it and and now it feels like something I'm just going to continue to do for the rest of my life yeah no it's cool and you're lucky because you have a cool name and a cool last name uh like <laughs> Mayling see you you can name a band if you have a a, a cool last name But if your but if your name is like Bob Jones, you're not gonna <laughs> name your your band Bob Jones, you know. But Pear Weaver, that sounds that sounds like rock and roll to me. Yeah. Okay. That's uh, thanks for that. I it's really difficult to know what it sounds like for someone that doesn't speak Swedish. You know what I mean? So you you don't know how your name sound in in a, to people that speak a different language, kind of. Yeah, but but it does sound cool, like a Van, like a Van Halen, because if you don't have a cool last name, like yeah, it's not <laughs> gonna work. So uh, I was reading that these albums, uh, they're like they like go together. They're like a trilogy, uh, in like yeah. in themes. What what are the themes that you explore uh, on this record, it's... especially on uh, on the one that you're about to release? Uh... It's, it's a very loose uh, theme, like the lyrics. Um, it started with the song on the first uh, solo album I did. And uh, the album is called Head Without Eyes. And the song is called Anywhere the Blood Flows. And I was really um, happy with the, how, how those lyrics came out. And then when I did the EP, I just continued that. It's, it's kind of... Um, Uh, it's very very loose on about a character that looking 
back on his life or whatever, like from from an afterlife point of mm -hmm. view. But you know how how we humans are for most of the part we always think back and wish sometimes we wish that we could change things and sometimes you know you always ask yourself like what if that question what if I would have done it like this or done it like that and uh, so it's it's maybe um, it, it's it's about those feelings and also the the feeling of like you know like outcast being on on side of on the other side of things to it's like a different perspective on things and i just continued to write uh, on with that in mind when i did the ep and then when it was time to do this new album i didn't really think that i was going to continue the same continue with the same themes but then the first uh, lyrics i wrote for the album is for the that was for the first song it's called dead sky lullaby yeah that, and that starts the album great song yeah yeah and and then when i've written a couple of verses and and a course chorus it's like and then i just felt like well this is basically the same it, it's it's the same moods and vibes as the previous one so i just thought that i'm gonna go with it this time as well yeah no and 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 uh yeah it has a very like uh jammy feel to it uh so you did you have a bonus track on this uh a warrior soul cover for the losers uh uh why did you pick that song to to cover on on, on this new album it's during uh the pandemic you know when well lots most people sat at home and and worked and i recorded uh, a lot of stuff during the pandemic and I started to record cover songs um, uh, just to keep myself busy and because it was fun and I had the time because uh, I wasn't doing anything else really and uh, and the losers by warrior soul is is I've always liked that song and I liked that band when they came out as well because they they also felt they felt like outcasts it, it was a band that didn't belong anywhere really and there was sort of in the middle of metal and punk rock and uh, whatever uh, and they, they felt felt like an, an odd band in, in a sense but they rocked so uh, I like them and I like that song I like the the lyrics are very straightforward uh, but it, it has like an epic kind of anthemic vibe to the song so I always wanted to to uh, play that song and or record that song. And now I recorded a, a pretty different version of it. And then it just felt like it, it suits the rest of the album. It, it sort of, it, it works with the other songs, I think. It's, it's basically the same theme lyrically as well. So it, it works. So maybe maybe some of the other cover songs I recorded will work with something else in the future. I don't know. Yeah, I'm curious. What other cover songs did you play? Ah, <laughs> we'll <laughs> see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe something very surprising. So uh, I know there's a few songs that are already out. You put out a few singles, including the one that you mentioned. But you also have The Serpents Here, which is the name of the album. That one, uh, tell me a little bit about that one, about The Serpents Here. And uh, that was uh, that was that was the first I think that was the first song that I I uh, wrote the, or came up with the idea for the music. It, it's been like the it's been an idea that's been lying around for quite a while. And but now I felt like it was it was uh, time to do try and do something from it um i wanted it to be i wanted the whole i, I wanted the whole album to be a little bit more loose a little bit more uh, rock and roll compared to the previous two things and that's why i wanted to record it live in the studio with two friends as well and as this song is is a pretty straightforward rock song with 
a very, you know, verse, chorus, verse, chorus type of song. But then I wanted to include some stuff that maybe you don't hear in regular rock songs so much, which would be like the free form improv noisy parts as a, as a, in, instead of just putting like a guitar solo or something there, it felt more interesting to do, to do an improvisation together, uh, to, to sort of add some different type of dynamics to, to the song. It, it, it gets very chaotic for a while and then it comes back. So you got a little bit more of a ebb and flow type of feeling to it. Yeah, no, it, it really does. So, uh, so I, I know you're playing with countless bands, but I'm very curious, uh, on which Opeth albums did you work on? I played um, the first album I was on was a live recording called Lamentations. And and then I did this um, studio albums was uh, Ghost Reveries, Watershed, and Heritage, uh, and three live albums as well: the Roundhouse Tapes and uh, Live at the Royal Albert Hall. No, well, you played on some very awesome albums. So yeah, uh, that's that's very cool uh, that you uh, had all those years. You know all those bands. Uh, so. Like playing in all those bands, like uh, what do you have like very like cool stories of like uh, of like recording those like uh, with Ope for you know other bands that you've done uh, work for? It's I'd say with all the bands that I've uh, played with, it's it's a little bit different how how each band approach recording in in the studio and with some. With some bands, you just um, set up your gear and you record live, like I did for the for the solo album. And uh, with some bands, you do uh, instrument by instrument, so to speak. Uh, you start with the drums and 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 then you add bass or guitars, and vocals would usually come last. Uh, so it's it's a very different process, I would say, for for each mm -hmm. for each band, um, and I think the the ambition for the different bands uh, usually, like let's say in Opus, Michael writes the music, and it's his vision, what he has in mind to to trying to reach those goals, so to speak. And I think he's always had a good grip on how to record things in, in order to get there. With, let's say, uh, Spiritual Beggars is a band that I've played with for, for many, many years. Uh, and th that would be completely different. We would just set up uh, instruments in a room and record it live and 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 just go for it because there are different qualities to different music you know and you and you want to have different moods and, and vibes come across in different ways i guess so so it's not always this it's definitely not always the same how you no. record i would imagine yeah it, it all depends on the musician so uh yeah. for doing the the singing now like which vocalist uh uh inspired you you know like uh or or are your favorite, you know, for when you came to your own vocals, like inspired you to not to imitate, but to like inspired you in the way that you wanted to sing? Oh, there's there's so many. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's but but as I said, with with my albums, it's it's it doesn't matter. Like if I mean, well, if we're talking about uh, heavy rock and and metal and stuff, I mean. I like Dio and Ian Gillen just as much as everyone else, you know, but that's not the type of vocals that I would want to have on my solo albums anyway, mm -hmm. you know, it, it would be a different type of type of vocals, which maybe in some ways would be closer to Nick Cave or something like that, you know. Yeah, especially or, or... I know I know what you mean with Nick Cave because there's a song on the record now that I think has a lot of like spoken word 
I think I, I, yeah. I think it's, this house is someone else's now or Blackguard style silent. I can't remember which one now. Uh, yeah, but so or I like I like for for my own music. I like uh, I don't I don't really not yet at least. Who knows what's going to happen in the future? But my ambition has not been to have. Uh, I want the music to uh, the vocals to be part of the music in in some kind of way uh, when if if we're talking about metal and and those types of vocalists it it always feels like the vocals are on top of everything else if you know what i mean and, yeah this to me feels with, more of like a pure uh rock and roll record uh more rock and roll psychedelic yeah so i, I just want everything to to be more like a package in in in, in this way and, and follow the the mood uh, of the music kind of so and so the vocals are maybe a little bit more laid back than you know the high pitched uh, screamy stuff or whatever yeah so. i don't think the high pitched screamy vocals would go with this music so i i think yeah no. the, the music and the vocals go hand in hand they complement each other in a way so yeah that's, that's very important for me i mean there are like there's so many fantastic vocalists uh, out there you know a guy like mike Patton from oh yeah Faith no more he i mean he or and and numerous other groups i mean he could he could do things for all kinds of styles of music and make it work you know because he's got a good sense for for like a stylistic uh he he knows what the music demands, so to speak, and and I think that approach is very important to me with the vocals is, as well. I think the music dictates what type of vocals it it, it needs, so to speak. That makes that makes total sense uh, because yeah, yeah. Like, because listening to this music and the vocals, like, yeah, they they go hand in hand. You don't want to have vocals that overshadow the music or. Uh, if it, it depends on the style, so I want to show the the artwork of the album uh, for yeah. people who haven't seen it. So here is uh, the serpents here. Uh, so talk to me a little bit about the inspiration for this artwork. It is, uh, I mean, obviously we've seen skulls and and snakes on many album covers through the years, uh, but there are a few. There's a there's a few album covers that I really like that have uh, skulls and snakes. Uh, one is a an obscure German band from the seventies called Message. Uh, they have an album called From Books and Dreams, and I've always loved that uh, album cover, which is a skull and a, a snake. Uh, it's it 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 always looked very spooky, but still beautiful kind of and um so i i i just wanted to do something with the with the same imagery but i wanted to use a lot more striking colors you know i mean i call it i call it the born again colors with you know the black sabbath born again album cover colors on this so i think i just wanted to to have that um, a little bit more in your face kind of vibe because because this could have just been done, you know, with a black background and and no, know, but I black think and the the red gives it like a pop, you know. Uh, yeah, exactly. So, so yeah, I... and and uh, it it also signals that it might not be uh, the usual usual thing that you would expect from an album cover with a skull and a snake on i don't know because of the colors maybe obviously the the lyrics i mean both both things on the album cover sort of ties in tie in with the lyrics lyric themes of the album as well but i mean it's it's you know um uh, there there's you don't have to intellectualize about it so much either. It looks cool as well. <laughs> yeah, no, it does look so. cool. 
Uh, yeah. yeah, I think it's a you know it's a cool album artwork, and I think the 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 color red really uh, goes well with it and gives it the layers that we talk about. So uh, yeah, so for you working on, on this album, did you have a uh, uh, like if you had to if someone for hasn't listened to Per Weaver's uh, music, which track from this album you would say like, hey, listen to this track and you'll get an idea of, of what I'm all about. I think um, there's a track called Black Guards Stand Silent, uh, which is, I think in, that's also the longest song, but it's not super, super long. It's eight minutes, but it's, yeah. it's, it's a track that I think has most of the different moods and, and themes that, that are on the album. Uh, it's it's the psychedelic melodic parts, but there's also some dissonant and avant-garde stuff, and also some uh, rocking things going on with a good beat and a good groove. Uh, I think I think in that uh, in that track, I think you'll find most of the stuff that this album represents. I think. Yeah, no, it's a it's a great track. It's the third track on the record. And yeah, it's, it is yeah. the last track on the on the record. So, uh, so it's coming out on March fifteen. So, uh, your uh, which physical are you putting this out on vinyl? Which physical formats are you going to be releasing this in? It's, it's it's only on vinyl. Um, oh, I am it? actually a fan fan of uh, CDs, but there won't be a CD this time. So that's very so interesting. It's only that they decided to buy yeah. a CD. Uh, so yeah, that's a that's yeah. A I know. I don't maybe because the the EP that I, that was put out uh, uh, a few years ago, there was only vinyl for that one as well, no CD. So I don't know. Maybe it could do. Uh, you know, put put both uh, both of those two albums in a CD package, so to speak. That would work. Maybe, so, yeah. So, so yeah. Uh, once you release the album, what are the the near future plans for Peer Weaver? Uh, are you gonna do some shows, more music? Uh, I'm gonna play a few shows now in the spring here at home in Sweden, uh, and then I'm gonna try to. I haven't played live so much uh, with the solo music but i want to do it more because when i started i didn't really know mm -hmm. even if i wanted to play live with this but then I've, I've done it a few times and i've even done an acoustic show just on my own uh, playing acoustic versions of the songs as well so but i'm definitely going to try to play more live and apart from my own stuff, I'm going to do some touring with other bands as well, as I usually do. So I'll try to mix things up. But I, I definitely have the ambition to play more live uh, with my own solo thing. Yeah, no, it should be cool. Uh, so, uh, Per, I want to thank you for, you know, taking some time to chat with me about the serpents here, music and other stuff. So uh, hopefully... I'm going to post the link for people who want to get that vinyl and listen to that who probably haven't heard the, uh, the music so they can get into it. I would recommend it to people yeah. who like, you know, it's exper it's like an experimental rock. It has a lot of like 70s, 60s influence to, to this type of rock, I, I believe, at least in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of influences that go in there. So, and 60s and 70s, definitely. Yeah. So people, uh, the album's out on March 15. I'm going to post the link for people to pre-order it. So, Pierre, again, oh. thank you for taking time to me to join me on my couch. So until <laughs> next time, people, <laughs> this is Hector. Okay. The Shield dude on a couch. And we'll see you all right here on the couch. Thank you. Okay. Thank Bye. You.